you know pricing universal rental car volume to and uh, you know let me briefly explain about this so in this simulation you are essentially a newly appointed district manager of the underperforming florida region of universal rental car so you are a district manager and your mission in this simulation is to develop a pricing strategy uh, for, for the reason in order to improve performance so what what decision you have to make in the simulation essentially your decision is simply to set prices uh, for every month you will be setting two prices one for weekday and other for no, weekend your voice is breaking sir okay so uh, is that everyone is facing the same or maybe some as uh, akash is my am i am i audible okay so yeah so i think sakshi there will be some internet problem so uh, anyway i am recording this so in case if there is a problem uh, you know uh, recording can be you know viewed better all right i do understand that it's a problem is this fine now sakshi or still it's, it's breaking sir it's still breaking off and on okay okay so i think there's some network problem yeah so i'm anyway i'm recording it i will share it okay so uh Uh, so what you have to do is you have to decide prices in three regions of the Florida for weekdays and weekend prices, and you will be having a fleet of cars initially given, initially distributed in these three regions, and then you can redistribute this uh, once in three months, right? So this is the the context of this. So basically, you have two types of customers in these three cities. uh the leisure customer and business traveler and there are three markets in florida regions orlando miami and tampa orlando is the largest market and it has more leisure travelers miami is the second largest market and most business traveler and tampa smallest market and has both type of type of customers and your goal in the simulation is to increase the profitability all right let's talk about orlando since orlando is the largest car market and they have 1.2 million rental days per month and due to presence of eight theme park including sea world disney and universal studio 53% of these car rentals are of uh, you know are to be the leisure customers second is miami the second largest car market with 700000 rental days per month with 60% of all us trade with central america flowing through miami and with largest concentration of banks miami is comprised comprised of 78% of these car rentals with the business customers and third is tampa the smallest car market in florida with 200000 rental days per month tampa has almost two business customers for every leisure customer it has thriving business community and also has some tourist attractions uh, you know such as bush garden so in the nutshell what i'm trying to uh, you know uh, present about these three regions that these three regions have different combinations of customers like in orlando as you can see that 47% abhi aaj se chal lete hain aaj se aata hu chin mein hai so uh, you know business travelers are 47% in orlando and leisure travelers are 53% uh in miami business travelers are 78% the leisure travelers 22% and in tampa 64% business travelers and 36% the leisure travelers and since we know that the leisure traveler have more price sensitivity so price sensitivity in orlando is highest and price sensitivity in miami is lowest because miami has the high percentage of of you know as you can see business traveler so that's why the year uh, you know sensitivity is lowest among three and there they have uh, you know 64% business traveler in tampa and 36% the leisure traveler so they have the middle uh, you know sensitivity to price as far as the fleet capacity is concerned initially 22000 cars are given to 
Orlando, 13,000 to Miami and 4,000 to Tampa. And I have already explained in the earlier slides that the Orlando is the largest market with 1.2 million rental days per month. So what do you mean by rental days? If one car is rented per day, so it's called one rental day. And let's say if 100 cars are rented in one day, so then we can say 100 rental days, right? So where they have 1.2 million rental days, in Orlando, 700,000 million or 700,000 million rental days, essentially 7 million, not 700,000, sorry. So 7 million and 2 million, uh, you know, in the temper. And if you talk about the cost structure. Because oh, uh, Orlando is large. So is this 0. 0.7 million? Okay, so this is, uh, okay, it's 0.7 million, absolutely. It's 0.7 million, it's 0.2 million, absolutely. Sir, yeah. can you please explain this again? Okay, so rental, let me explain. Rental uh, days. Rental days, yeah. So what I'm saying that if a one customer is renting car for one day, then it's a one rental day. And let's say if 1,000 customers are renting car on one day, then it's a 1,000 rental days. And let's say if 1,000 customers are renting all 30 days, 1,000 cars, then it's essentially 30,000 rental days, correct? So for example, like, you know, in Orlando, we have 22,000 rental days. So if you wanted to calculate on average, how many cars are being rented every day? So you divide this 22,000 with 30. So that will be the number of cars being rented every day, right? Okay, you know, is that make sense? Yes, I got it. Okay, wonderful. And the last point is the cost structure. Orlando has moderate cost, Miami has highest cost, and Tampa has the lowest. I will come to this cost point in some detail. So basically, there are three types of heterogeneity in this simulation. Customer heterogeneity, so there are two types of customers, business and leisure. And we also know that the composition of this customer also varies. That's why we have market heterogeneity. So Orlando, Miami, and Tampa they have different percentage of customer as explained here, as you can see there. And there are then temporal heterogeneity. So, uh, you know, maybe on weekdays, more business travelers are renting cars. On weekend, more leisure travelers are renting cars. And then there's some seasonality of demand also in this simulation. So for example, let, let me just explain in this simulation, if I consider average demand, then I can multiply corresponding factor and then I can regulate my, you know, demand in that particular month. So, for so example, your voice is breaking. Uh, yes, uh, I think this this is an internet problem. So, uh, I'm recording. Uh, you can you can you can watch it later. So, what I'm saying that, uh, you know, here I'm trying to explain you the seasonality in demand in simulation. So, in color black, it's a business customer demand, and in red, it's a leisure customer demand. So, as you can see that. There's a 85% of the average demand you have in, uh, you know, month of December for business traveler. Whereas you can see that in month of January, your demand is, if you, if you have average demand, then you can multiply with the factor of 1.05 to calculate your demand in the month of January. So we can find out the demand in every month since we have the average demand number given to us in the simulations while multiplying those factors which are given here in this particular slide. Okay, the next point is uh, the customer sensitivity to demand is also very interesting in this simulation. So as you can see that, uh, you know, just to explain you here uh, in this slide, so we have leisure and business traveler. And let's say if I increase price from $30 to $50 uh, for both leisure and business uh, demand, business customer demand, then there's a 30% decrease in demand due to 20% increase in price for uh, leisure customer. But on the other hand, for business customer, if I increase my price by 20%, the decrease in demand is only 5%. So as you can see that, which customer are more sensitive to price here in this case? Leisure customers. Leisure customers are more price sensitive, absolutely. Right. How do we calculate demand from leisure customer, for example? So this is a demand curve for leisure customer. And let us assume that 
No, don't assume. Actually, it's given that the demand for laser customer in Orlando in July, let's say hundred thousand rental days, right? And let's say in this simulation, there's one more point also. There's one competitor also. So in the simulation, you have three markets with different customer composition, but you also have one competitor who also operating in these three markets. And let's say that your competitor, let's say set price to forty dollar per day, and let's say your price is fifty dollar per day. Then how do we determine how much demand you are going to receive and how much demand? your competitor is going to receive so that can be calculated by this simple approach let me try to explain you uh, this approach here so what we are saying that if i if i go here and see that there are 70% customer who are willing to pay uh, 40 dollar or more right but since you have put your selling price at 50 dollar per day so there are only 55% of this so as you can see that here it's 55% so 55% of 100000 8 55000 rental days so there are only 55000 customer whose willingness to pay is more than uh, this 50 dollar per day then how do we decide what will the market share of the competitor and what will the market share of of universal car rental which is you are going to uh, you know run this company for a year so what are you saying that 70000 minus 50000 5000 is 15000 so there are 15000 people who will only choose competitor because for these 15000 people their willingness to pay is greater than uh, you know uh, 40 but less than 50 and since universal price is 50 so those guys are not going to rent the universal car So fifteen thousand unit will straight away goes to the competitor because they have the lower price. But for remaining fifty five thousand, since their willingness to pay is more than fifty, although the price for competitor is less than our price, but in order to keep this model simple and not to complicate your life, what I have enabled in the simulation that the customer to whom the willingness to pay is more than the price, that customer equally can choose between the two. what i'm saying that these 55000 people will be equally split between you and your competitor so please understand this point whosoever customer has their willingness to pay is more than the price offered by these two company then that customer can randomly choose any company so that's why i assume that in this simulation just to keep it simple we assume that those customer are going to be equally split between the competitor and you the universal car rental so applying this logic i can divide the demand in the revenue so for example all 100% of 15000 guys are going to go to competitor and then 50% of this 55000 people whose willingness to pay is more than 50 dollar are going to come to you and come to your competitor and they are also going to come you 50% so 27500 is going to competitor and 27500 also coming to you Then the total demand captured by your computer is going to forty two thousand five hundred because fifteen thousand plus twenty seven thousand five hundred is going to be forty two thousand five hundred, and your demand will be twenty seven thousand five hundred. And since you are charging fifty dollar, so your revenue will be twenty seven thousand five hundred into fifty is going to be this much, and your computer revenue is going to be this much because they are charging forty dollar per rental day, and they have. Forty-two thousand five hundred rental days, and if this is the case, then you are catering to thirty-nine point two nine percent of the customer, and competitor is catering to the sixty percent of the customer. So this is how the market is being split between you and you and your competitor. All right, now let's talk about the economics of pricing decision. So what we are saying that there are fixed cost. Which include cost of land and building, security, salary of management and staff, maintenance, insurance, and what happens is, as I mentioned earlier, the there are initially twenty one thousand six hundred seventeen rental car are this given in Orlando, twelve thousand eight hundred seven cars in Miami, and four thousand eighty seven in Tampa. So, and the fixed cost in uh, you know. Uh, 
Orlando is this much. So per car, you can divide this amount by this and you will get $344 per car per month. So as you can see that the fixed cost is highest in Miami and the lowest in Tampa. So this fixed cost also you need to incorporate. You may incorporate, I, I should not say need to incorporate while you are making a decision for this simulation universal rental car. So what's the learning objective? Why I have included this simulation in this course? I want to have these lessons to be learned while playing the simulation. So first lesson is to understand the customer sensitivity to price. As you can see that we have two types of customer, business and leisure, and they have different sensitivity and they have every city have different composition of customer and there's a heterogeneity in weekday and weekend. So accordingly, you need to decide prices, all those three reasons every month for weekdays and weekend. And you have to account for demand differences across those segments. And also you, you have the fixed cars and there's a fixed cost, whether the car are running or not, you are paying that fixed cost. So you have to optimize your resource utilization. And I think you, you know that, you know, uh, as Dr. Anshu mentioned in today's session, that resource utilization is a very, very important component of this revenue management and dynamic pricing. And definitely you have to learn how to vary price dynamically. So that's a, the main objective of, of this course here, of the simulation in this course. And then you need to connect the pricing design with firm's profitability, whether you wanted to increase market share or you want to increase profits, you have to decide that. And then you also need to predict and respond to competitors pricing decisions. The simulation will provide you the customer's price charge every month to you. And you can look at customer's price and customer market share. You can accordingly decide what should be an optimal price for you. And then you have to understand how business conditions influence pricing decisions. What may work best? Definitely, I'm not going to reveal everything what you need to do that you have to figure it out while playing this, but I will give you some pointer. So for the first pointer is you need to focus on critical segments and locations and you need to ignore the crumbs and you need to have a consistency in your approach, figure out what is working and what is not working and whatever working you need to stick with it. That's very, very important. And you need to understand customer's pricing behavior and you need to react intelligently, you know, you should not always say that if the customer has reduced price, you, you essentially has to reduce or customer has increased, the competitor has increased price, you necessarily has to increase. That you have to decide and context definitely matters. And you will see that maximizing market share may not be the right answer and that can be a trap. So you need to ask what level of market share can I most profitably achieve? Don't assume that competitor's pricing strategy is rational. When reacting to the computer, think before you act. Change in price disrupts status quo for all the players. So when you are changing price, you should not assume that customer is not going to react. The computer is not going to react to your price change. So you need to account, account that also. Costs are central consideration in pricing business and some fixed costs might be avoidable for you. So you, you have to recognize the importance of segmented pricing. Price may only be available marketing lever when other levers are locked down so in this simulation, for example, and be skeptical of historical pricing practices. And then you need to align your operational strategy to the pricing strategy and you need to play the simulation and 